just a preview of one of my next uh, restoration projects. This is a really nice old Spartan console radio. <clears throat> Can't find a model number ID or anything on it yet, but uh, I know it's 1920s, 1930s vintage. Let's see if I can get some more light in here. Since I know YouTube makes all my videos really dark, but uh, it's in really good condition other than some some paint wore off the control panel and looks like a mismatched knob there on the right. Beautiful uh, cabinet work on this. I'm not going to be touching the original finish. That's that's not my deal. Uh, in fact, I'd, if I was the owner of this radio, I'd leave it intact. It's not that bad. I'm just going to be doing an electrical restoration, and I'll be making videos about that, of course. I'm going to turn this around so we can get a look in the back. I gotta move the whole cabinet for that because I don't have enough light. Here's a look at the uh, back of the radio. There's been quite a few hacks done to this, which is unfortunate. And here's the AC receiver plate. I think this was added. This was either factory or added later when they added the voltage converter. I can't really get a good picture here. Spartan power converter. You can see the terminal strip that goes to the radio here. Some mismatched tubes. And an AeroVox capacitor. It's been a while since I saw one of those. Nice big power transformer. And the actual radio chassis is farther in the back there. I still don't know what model receiver this is. There's only a patent label in here. Uh, the Sparks Withington Company, Jackson, Michigan. It might be a field coil power supply or something down here, I'm not sure yet. Um, but the speaker, unfortunately, you can see <clears throat> there's a replacement speaker behind the original speaker frame. I thought that was kind of odd. And in fact, I didn't notice it until just a minute ago. Uh, so maybe I can even have the original speaker rebuilt. Depends on the budget of the owner. But uh, it's also somebody added an RCA jack here. Probably that's probably what uh, comes out of the original speaker terminal there. So, maybe hit a written on the back of the radio. It's not something I would have done to a, a nice antique like this. But I'm going to do a nice electrical restoration on this and uh, see how things turn out. There's a quarter inch, uh, excuse me, quarter inch jack on the back of the chassis there. Probably an external speaker jack or. Uh, something I'm not real sure it looks like the chassis slides out on some some rails here so I'm gonna be looking into that in a few minutes here too uh, I apologize for the dark and out of focus video it's for some reason it's just really uh, really hard to get a good video inside the back of this cabinet my camera is not particularly sensitive to light so stay tuned for the restoration videos on this thanks to the uh, the owner of the radio I've got this nice Hickok 600 tube tester and I'll be able to use that to test all the tubes in here so let's see how what happens well after I was making the videos at the back and I took some still pictures with the flash um, I could read the nameplate clearly on the back and it's a model 931 so that will make it much easier for me to find the information. Here's the chassis out of the Spartan 931. I had to remove the tube from this down here so that it didn't hit on the bench. And um, a few things I've noticed about this. I don't, I don't know what this little chassis is for, but it connects to this terminal strip here off the power converter. And they, 
cable for the main radio chassis also connects there. So I gotta label all these wires to make sure they get put back in the same spot. This one here um, looks like it's been spliced. I'm not sure why. It looks like it would have normally gone on the first terminal. <clears throat> and the problem with these old cloth wires a lot of times is the colors all fade so they all look very close to being the same color. And so I'm going to label each wire and draw a diagram of where they all go. Also got the cover off the tube cage here and found that half the tubes are just laying in here. And uh, I don't think these are the right tubes for this either. These are 45 tubes and I thought they were supposed to be 484s. So I'll have to look at the schematic again. This is not the right capacitor. I think this was added because the original was right here in the center. A much larger capacitor. Uh, other than that, everything looks to be in pretty good condition. There's just you know a couple of minor splices and I think the worst part is going to be physically removing the chassis and getting everything cleaned up more than it is going to be rebuilding it because there's only a handful of capacitors and resistors in the whole radio. Uh, it's not a super heterodyne, it's just a TRF I think. So let me get these chassis off and have a look. And I also found out this is a phono input jack. So that's what that does. Well, I've got the power converter chassis out of this Spartan radio now. And now I, I noticed that the power transformer looks like it's been replaced. Apparently the old one melted down. There's a nasty, sticky, tarry substance on there. Hopefully that's just tar and, and nothing toxic because it's pretty nasty. Um, it's just all over underneath the chassis there. And all these wires are spliced. And um, Like I said, that capacitor there is not original. And that choke coil that was mounted underneath the wood, that's not original either because this... You know, at least I don't think it is because this cut here doesn't look factory. It's kind of rough. So I think what I'll do when I go through this chassis is I'll mount that choke coil over top of that old capacitor hole and uh, give this a clean up. Maybe put shrink tubing over where all that uh, tape is. I don't really care for electrical tape. That was this is an old repair though because that's old cloth tape <laughs> and uh, and it's pretty nasty under there. Luckily the main chassis doesn't look like it's been hacked on, it just needs to be cleaned up and I think the worst part's going to be, electrically the worst part's going to be this power supply and I still don't know what this little chassis does, it has a single 484 tube, whoops, and uh, there's not much in there. Uh, probably needs something to do with the power supply. But, on to the next step. Well, I've got some of that nasty goo scraped off the wood there. Now there's just uh, some residue left. And uh, another thing on this chassis here, it's definitely been pretty modified. I'm trying to figure out if they've rewired these uh, audio output tube sockets or not because they did have the wrong tubes. Then uh, this choke coil probably put that in there to make up for the I don't know if they took the field coil out of the housing or not but I'm assuming that's what that's there to take the place of is the field coil and uh, this is supposed to have type 182 tubes in the audio circuit there and they had 45s I think those tubes are very similar I think the filament voltage is different and um, no, maybe the pinout. I was trying to figure out if they changed that power transformer for more than one reason. Maybe when they changed that transformer, they also changed it to work with 45 tubes. Um, this other other chassis here is what had the 484 tube in it. So yeah, speaking of the tubes, I got to go through and test all these and mark them. But, uh, I think this power supply is going to be the hardest part by far. I got to figure out what they did here. more chaos on this radio the uh, add-on amplifier stage has been hacked a little bit I think this is a dual capacitor here in this metal box and that's been wire has been snipped on that so I gotta find the schematic for that the original speaker looks like the field coil and transformer are still there but they're probably bad somebody put in a, a 
permanent magnet speaker with its own transformer on it. Um, <laughs> this thing is just, just all hacked up. So I got to figure out which of these coils are, are still good, if any, and see if I can reconstruct that. I don't think the owner of the radio is going to want to go for a recon, but I'll see about it. If not, I'm just going to straighten up this wiring issue and put a better speaker in. And uh, if the field coil is bad, I'll just uh, keep that big choke on there that was installed before. So, I'm looking at the other chassis over here. Kind of got everything sorted out. The transformer is not original, and it's supposed to have uh, five volt filament winding for the original output tubes for the 182 output tubes and since there was 45 tubes in there the transformers got uh, 2.8 volt filament windings uh, you know for each set so another problem I ran into and the way this chassis has ground points they're just using various mounting screws for transformers and brackets and stuff as ground points and this one back here has 15 ohms of resistance between the one that's got the transformer center tap on it, you know, and, and this connection point. So I got to fix all these ground connection points so I got a good solid ground. And there's just, I got to figure out what other hacks have been done to this and I'm going to start restoring it. Okay, finally some progress. Got rid of that choke that was added on because this field coil on the original speaker was still good. And uh, got new filter caps installed. Took care of the hacked up B plus wires. And uh, the, the cap on the input side of the choke is here 22 microfarad, which is the maximum safe value for a type 80 rectifier tube. Another 22 microfarad over here on the output side of the choke. Made a ground stud for the cap. And uh, also put on a grounded AC cord. I'd like to get rid of some some of the splices on this transformer, but it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, I've got a fuse installed to make it much safer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the rectifier tube, which I've already tested on my tube tester, and uh, I've verified that the power transformer is also working. I'm going to put the rectifier tube in and check for uh, B plus at the red wire and see what I get. Okay, power supply circuit seems to be working all right. Uh, had to keep the voltage below 120 going in because at, at no load the B plus was going over 500 volts. Probably would have hit 600 if I would have took it up to full input voltage. And I almost blew that new filter cap because the cap's only rated at 450. Um, so I'm going to call this part good for now and move on to the main radio chassis also needed to put some screws in this terminal strip here. This was just hanging here loose. So I found a couple of old style flathead screws and remounted that back like it was supposed to be. And uh, got my new three prong power cord in here. And I don't like how these two things here look, but better than nothing, I guess. These holes were already here. I don't know if this one was or not. That's where that replacement filter cap was. The only mistake I made on here that really upset me um, was cleaning that tar residue off. I accidentally took some of the paint off too. Um, just a little too much scrubbing, but I'm going to set this part aside and move on to the main chassis, see what's going on there. I'm really starting to love the modular construction that these Spartan radios use. The two assemblies here just bolt onto the main piece of wood with the two studs and uh, the metal rod from the tuning condenser sticks out and just plugs into a socket in the side of this cage so you just take those two nuts off slide it over and lift it off and you got the whole the whole amplifier assembly and this is what they that's what they call it but this is basically all the tubes in the uh, RF stage here so I gotta take this apart and replace the bad caps in this in fact I think that one right there is all looks pretty nasty yeah, so, got to replace some crumbling wires on the volume control and on the power switch. I'm hoping that the wires to the assembly here are still usable. They should be. But let's see if I can get this thing apart now. <laughs> 